Amen. He's worthy of it. Amen. He's worthy of it this morning. Amen. Ain't nobody like Jesus. Won't nobody love you like Jesus. Mm. Put that part of the song, Living He Loved Me. Put that up there. Look at that. Living He Loved Me. Dying He Saved Me. Buried He Carried My Sins Far Away. Rising He Justified Freely Forever And One Day He's coming. One day, he's coming back. Let me, let me, let me read that again. Maybe, 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 I don't know, maybe you're not as tired of sin as I am. Maybe you're not as tired of the devil as I am. Listen, if you'd only knew, you say, how can you be in such a good mood? I, listen, I just know what Jesus has done for me. If you only knew what Jesus brought me through. That's why you've heard me say it before. I'm not going to judge how somebody worships because I don't know what it took for the Lord to get you here this morning. Amen? I don't know what it took for the Lord to, to get you here this morning. Uh, and you, So on this Easter Sunday morning, uh, let's just remember that in living, He loved me. Dying, He saved me. Buried, He carried my sin far away. Rising, He justified freely forever. And one day, and I pray it is soon, Jesus Christ is going to return to this earth and capture, rapture the church out of this world. We've got a reason to rejoice this morning. Amen? We've got a reason to celebrate. We've got a reason to be happy. We've got a reason to be glad. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. So let's be glad this morning. And be glad because we, we know the king who made everything right between him and humanity through Jesus Christ, his son. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm glad to be here this morning. If you will remain standing with me, turn in your Bibles uh, uh, to the book of Matthew, chapter 27. We're going to start with verse 1, read down through verse 5 this morning. Matthew chapter 27, uh, starting with verse 1, reading down through verse 5. Uh, while you're finding your place, listen, if you're looking for Matthew, it's the first book of the New Testament. Uh, and so uh, turn around, say hey to somebody, let them know you're glad they're here. Um, let them know that you're, uh, you're glad to see them, even if you're not glad to see them. Don't lie to them, though. Don't lie to them this morning. Matthew chapter 27 starting with verse 1, reading down through verse 5. The word of the Lord from the New Living Translation says this morning, uh, When morning came, all the chief priests and elders of the people plotted against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that he had been condemned, was remorseful and brought back the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priest and the elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. And they said, What is that to us? You see to it. Then he threw down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. May God add blessings on the reading of his words. You can be seated this morning. We have a, I have a short video I want to show you. It's only about three minutes long. Um, and just to set the scene, um, many of you uh, saw the movie uh, uh, in the 90s called Schindler's List. Um, what, if you've not watched that, it's uh, just uh, uh, um, an intriguing video, a, a heart-stopping, just this wrenching video. We have a, I have a clip from that I want to show this morning. Uh, and in it, Schindler is at the end, um, uh, and he's talking about uh, how he could have, you know, he had worked out this deal where he could buy, for lack of better terminology, when that's really what he was doing, he was buying Jews from the Nazis to, to save them from the concentration camps. And we're at the end of the movie, and this is the scene that's played out. Go ahead and play that. He 
Hebrew from the Talmud. It says, whoever saves one life, saves the world entire. said there at the end I could have gotten one more person and I didn't could have got one more person and I didn't did you hear what he was saying there I know the the sound wasn't the, the best so he points to his car he said why did I keep my car I could have gotten 10 more people with my car the gold pin, two more people. You know, this morning, as I was pondering today, I thought, you know, each many people that are in church on Easter Sunday morning have probably been like me. In fact, I would say a lot are, in that I don't remember an Easter Sunday not be in church somewhere I, I i don't i just i don't i don't remember a sunday where i didn't go to church on easter sunday and on that sunday heard the story of jesus on the cross heard the story of jesus and what he did for us and we've already talked about that this morning some in fact most could probably preach a sermon about jesus and the cross better than I could. So today I'm not going to preach that typical Easter Sunday morning service. Because you know the story. But I do want to ask a question. What are you going to do with the knowledge that you have of the story of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ? And that video clip that I showed you. You know what he was, Schindler was experiencing? He was experiencing regret. Regret is the worst friend you could ever have. 
Regret is the worst friend you could ever have. It's a horrible friend. It's the worst of friends because it brings up all these emotions within you. It stirs up within you these thoughts of, I wish I could have or I should have done, whether good or bad. I believe the regret that Schindler had was a good regret of thinking, I did do a lot, but I could have done more. The opposite side of that is the regret that says, I should have done something. Schindler's, it was, I did something, but I could have done so much more. Regret is a horrible thing to deal with. And, you know, there are a lot of people in the Bible who had to regret and dealt with re regret. David, uh, whenever he had had, uh, uh, and, uh, you know, after his affair with Bathsheba, he murdered her husband, Uriah the Hittite. Uh, um, and then he, uh, the child that was born out of the affair died, uh, and David experienced regret. Um, King Saul, uh, whenever he was rejected by God because Saul disobeyed what God told him to do, Saul experienced regret. Uh, uh, Peter, who betrayed Jesus not once, not twice, but three times, uh, experienced regret. Uh, uh, Esau, uh, when he sold his birthright to, to his brother for a pot of stew for one meal later in life, we find that he lived in regret. Judas, in the text that I read to you, um, um, regret is, is what drove him to suicide because he realized that he had betrayed Jesus Christ. In his words, he had betrayed innocent blood. That word regret, uh, uh, according to Merriam-Webster's, means to mourn the loss or death of, to miss very much, uh, uh, specifically sorrow aroused by circumstances uh, beyond one's control or power to repair. It also means an expression of distressing emotion such as uh, sorrow. Regret can be a powerful motivator to, not, to make sure that we don't make the same mistake twice. Regret, when it's dealt with properly, will, it'll drive us to do better and to be better. Schindler experienced some horrible regret in life. Can I tell you this morning, I don't want to live in that regret. I want to realize today that people are valuable. Let me say that again. I, I thought I'd maybe, I, I don't know, maybe this morning you don't view them that way, but I do. People are valuable. We live in a disposable society. The average American uh, throughout the year produces 1,704 pounds of garbage. Three times the global average. We live in a disposable society. We live in a fast food society. Did you know that at any given time in America, or over the 24-hour period, at any given time, one-third of Americans are eating out? Appliances are made to, to replace, not repair. Vehicles anymore are getting that way. They're made to just uh, replace and not repair. We live in a throwaway society, and the problem comes in when we take that mentality and it comes in to view of people. We start looking at people, and, and we think that people uh, can be just, you know, they make a mistake. Well, we'll just go on to the next one. Can I tell you today, people are not disposable. Amen. Let me say that again. People are not disposable, uh, even when we're broken. Even if they've committed a horrible act. Even if they're a deadbeat. Even if they're a criminal. Hey, let's just bring this home a little bit. Even if they come to church every week and still have a horrible attitude. Kind of slid that one in there, right? You thought I was just, you didn't think I was going to talk to y'all this morning? Even if, if they claim to be a Christian but have no fruit of salvation in their life, uh, the, those people uh, are still valuable. People 
are valuable to God. And can I tell you this this morning? People should be valuable to us as well. People should be valuable to us. We should see the value in people. And understand that, here's the reality this morning, of, that everyone is worth saving. You say, but you don't know some of the people I know. You don't know some of the people I've encountered. I've encountered some horrible people in life. By all accounts, they weren't worth the bullet to shoot them. Y'all looking at me like I'm the only one that's ever thought that. Y'all looking at me like y'all ain't ever dealt with horrible people. We all deal with horrible people throughout, this, throughout our lives. We all deal with people that we don't like or, or, or they don't like us. We deal with people who would rather commit a crime than to live righteously. We all meet and know those kind of people. But can I am here to tell somebody this morning that everyone is worth saving. In fact, John 3.16 says it best regarding the value of humanity to Christ. You know it. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. When it says that he gave his life, uh, uh, that he loved the world, when he says the whole world, that is exactly what he means, uh, the whole world. Uh, all races, uh, all ethnicities, all social groups, uh, all people uh, are worth uh, saving because Jesus died for all of them. Can I be as bold to say this this morning, uh, that there is no place for racism in the body of Christ? The whole world is truly in his hands. There is one way to peace, and that's through the power of the cross of Jesus Christ. And before Jesus Christ came into our lives, we were all horrible sinners. I don't know, maybe you were better than me. Maybe you're, maybe, maybe you're that one. You're not, but maybe you think you're that one. Before Jesus came into our lives, we were horrible sinners. And my heart was black with sin. My life was on a one-way track for hell. But Jesus, in his infinite love, reached down and redeemed me, redeemed you out of that life of sin and shame and suffering. And he shown us the light. And now we can walk in that light. Can I tell you today, people are worth saving no matter the sin they may have committed i'm reminded of the old song let me read to you what it says once my soul was astray from the heavenly way and was wretched and vile as could be but my savior in love gave me peace from above when he reached down his hand for me i was near to despair when he came to me there and he showed me that i could be free then he lifted my feet gave me gladness complete when he reached down his hand up for me, how my heart does rejoice when I hear his sweet voice. In the tempest to him I then flee. There he, there to lean on his arms, safe, secure from all harm, since he reached down his hand for me. When the Savior reached down for me. When the Savior reached down for me, I was lost and undone without God or His Son when the Savior reached down for me. That was my life before Jesus Christ showed up. But when Jesus shows up, why? Because I'm valuable to Him. He searched me out. He sought me out. And He bought me with His blood. And now I am redeemed and I can live and I can tell others who Jesus Christ is. Regret is the worst friend we could ever have so don't live in sin this morning don't live in sin know that all people are valuable know that everybody is worth saving every person needs to know who jesus christ is in fact after you have been redeemed after you have been saved jesus called us each and every one of us jesus called us to go and tell Jesus called us to go and tell. You say, what are we go where are we to go? I'm glad you asked. We're to go to the highways and the hedges. 
In fact, Jesus instructed us in the New Testament to, to go and urge people to come into his house. In Luke chapter 14 and verse 23, uh, Jesus said, So uh, his master said, Go out into the country lanes and behind the hedges and urge anyone that you find to come. So the house will be full. That word urge that is used in the New Living Translation, in the King James, it's the word compel. And that word compel in the original language, in the original Greek, it means uh, to necessitate, uh, compel, uh, drive to, constrain. Listen, by force or threats or by, or by any other means. Now listen, I get that we're supposed to be loving people. I get that we're supposed to that we're supposed to just you know love on people and embrace people. And, and Jesus told us that, uh, but He also told us to go to the highways uh, and the hedges uh, and urge people uh, to come to His house uh, so that His house can be full. You remember last week uh, we talked about uh, uh, that Jesus said that His house uh, should be a house of prayer, but uh, they had made it a, a, a den of thieves. Can I tell you today uh, He wants His house full? so his house can be a house of prayer so more people can pray so more people can call out to him so that more people can encounter him and know him in the full partner sin can i tell you today it is up to us you and i the workers in the kingdom to go and tell to go to the highways and the hedges and urge people to come to god's house with a sense of urgency with a sense of emergency can i tell you today we live in a time where where we're in a spiritual emergency. We're in the midst of a spiritual emergency. Why? Because people, have you looked at suicide rates lately? We, listen, uh, among some age groups, uh, it is the leading cause of death. It's a, it is truly a, a, not an epidemic, it is a pandemic in our nation. And it's only getting worse. More and more people uh, are committing suicide for, for various reasons. They think there's no hope. They think there's no way out. Uh, they think nothing will ever get better. But I got, I got news for somebody today. Uh, there is a better way, uh, and his name is Jesus. We're in a spiritual emergency, uh, and so we've got to go and we've got to urge people uh, Come to the house of the Lord. Urge people to come and know Jesus Christ as Savior. Urge people that, hey, the end is near, and the only way to be saved from it is through Jesus Christ our Lord. You say, well, who are we to go and tell? After we go to the highways and the hedges, what are we supposed to do then? Well, after we go to there, we need to go to the least of these. When Jesus talks about the final judgment in Matthew chapter 25, uh, he, he, he declares, uh, and as you've done it to the least of these, you've done it to me. Who are the least of these? The hungry, the thirsty, the stranger, the naked, the sick, the prisoner, the hurting and those in anguish, uh, the outcast and the shut-in, uh, the criminal and the self-righteous. Uh, all of them need to know who Jesus is. All of them need to know who the Redeemer is. Everybody, they all need to know, all of them, the hungry, the thirsty. My question this morning is, or my desire, really not question, my desire, my longing, is that we will be willing to go to the least of these. That we will be willing to go to those and feed the hungry. That we will give water to the thirsty. Uh, that we will give a place uh, uh, to the stranger. Uh, uh, that we will give uh, and provide uh, for the naked. Uh, uh, that those who are sick uh, will pray a prayer of faith uh, and healing. To the prisoner uh, will go and minister to them uh, and let them know uh, that there is a better way. Can I tell you today, uh, we must not just go to the highways and the hedges. Yes, go there, uh, but we've got to go to the least of these. And can I just go a step further and say, when they do come into the house, we've got to embrace them just like we embrace everyone else. Oh my, let me preach a moment. Can I tell you today, if you can love somebody in a suit 
but you can't love somebody in squalor? The problem's not with the person in the squalor. The problem rests with you. We are called to love them all. Love like Jesus loved. Love like uh, Jesus uh, loved you. Uh, because you may be dressed up, uh, uh, you may be looking pretty, uh, especially on Easter. You may be having on your best best. Come in here with your shirt. I don't have a tie on today, but that's all right. I don't ever wear it. I told a friend of mine, I said it to several people, I told somebody before church, I said, listen, about the only time I wear a necktie anymore is if I'm doing a funeral. So um, next time you see me in a necktie, I'm probably doing a funeral. I ain't got one on today, but that's okay. You come into church and you look your best. I'm going to tell you, your heart can still be black with sin. You can, still be, you can look good and still be on your way to a devil's hell. You can look good. You can, listen, you can even be a member of the church. You can even tithe. You can be the best looking person in the world. And your heart can still be black with sin. And you're on your way to a devil's hell. But on the flip side of that, you cannot have the best. You may not have much. You may not have good clothes. You may not have the best car. But you can be in love with Jesus and on your way to heaven. God help us that when we go to the highways and the hedges and urge people to come in, that we will be willing to go to the least of these. He said, what are we supposed to do when we go to the least of these? Tell the gospel truth. Tell them the truth of the gospel. You know, the truth of the gospel is simply this, uh, that Jesus Christ uh, uh, was born of a virgin, uh, Mary. We celebrate that at Christmas. Uh, he lived uh, on this earth. He did great miracles, uh, wonders, and signs. He walked on water, made the lame uh, to walk, uh, the dumb to talk, the blinded eyes to see. Uh, he, he healed uh, uh, the leper. Uh, he healed the woman with the issue of blood. Uh, he, uh, he, he healed people who were blind. Uh, and then he walked on this earth. He did so many miracles. In fact, the Bible tells us uh, that he did so much. Uh, uh, good and so many things in his short life on this earth uh, uh, that, the, the, that there could not be enough volumes of books in the world uh, to write all that he did. Uh, uh, that's what Jesus did. Uh, and then after he did all those miracles, uh, he died on the cross. Uh, he was betrayed by Judas. Uh, uh, he was left by everybody else. Uh, and this man uh, uh, who did nothing uh, uh, but want good uh, for his people uh, uh, was betrayed. Uh, he was beaten. Uh, he was battered. Uh, and a crown of thorns was placed on his head. Uh, and he was hung on a cross. Uh, uh, there he died. After, uh, Before he died, though, uh, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Before he died, uh, he had to sit there and watch them gamble uh, over his garment. Before he died, uh, while he was on the cross, uh, he looked at one man and said, Today you will be with me in paradise. Can I tell you, how about that man? Uh, and when he knocks on the gates uh, of heaven uh, and Peter says, Who are you? Uh, uh, he says, I'm the first. The first one. I'm the first one to come in under the blood. Can I tell you? today. I don't know about you, but Jesus did some amazing things on this earth, and that's what he did. And after he died, he rose again on the third day. He walked this earth for another 40 days. He ascended to the right hand of the Father, where he makes intercession for you and for me on a daily, minute, secondly basis. And he intercedes for us, and he says, hey, I died for that one. I died for that one. I redeemed that one. I arose from the grave for that one. I took the stripes on my back uh, for that one. That's the gospel truth this morning. Uh, and that's what we celebrate. Uh, and that's what we go and tell people today. Yeah. Tell the gospel truth. And tell, let me just go ahead and say this too. Uh, the gospel is offensive to sin. The gospel is offensive uh, to sin. Sinners don't like the gospel. Satan doesn't like the gospel. Uh, that's why people, uh, uh, they just come against it so much uh, because they know they're doing wrong. They know they're not living right. And when you present the gospel, somebody can be in the darkest hole, in the deepest valley, and the story of Jesus is still powerful enough to bring them out. The story of Jesus is still powerful enough to bring anybody out of darkness into his marvelous light. Go to the highways and the hedges. Urge them to come in. Go to the least of these. Go tell them the gospel truth. But not only tell them the gospel truth, but tell them of the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. You know, if we hope in a man, we're of all things most miserable. 
But aren't you glad today we don't hope in the man, uh, but we hope in the man who is Jesus Christ the righteous. Uh, we hope in the deity that's in the man, uh, uh, that he is fully God and fully man. Uh, uh, that's who we hope in. Tell them of the hope that we have uh, in Jesus, but not just tell them of, of the gospel truth, not just tell them of the hope, uh, but tell them where we're going. I don't know where you're going, but I'm on my way to heaven. Maybe you're not. I hope you are. I want you to go to heaven with me. Hey, you've heard me. I've said this since I have been here. I have one agenda. We have one agenda as a church to win as many people for Jesus as we can win and take as many people to heaven with us as we can take. Why? Because heaven is a place worth going to. I'm like the like it says in Hebrews that I am looking for a city that hath foundations whose builder and maker is God. I'm on my way to heaven where there is four and twenty elders uh, uh, who continually cast their crowns uh, at the feet of Jesus uh, uh, as the angels fly around the throne uh, and declare holy, holy, holy uh, is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Can I tell you, uh, I'm looking forward to going to the city uh, uh, that has streets of gold and gates of pearl and walls of jasper uh, that's 1,500 miles uh, uh, square. Uh, and can I tell you, it is beauty beyond compare. We'll need no light in the city uh, because Jesus uh, and the Father are there uh, and they are the light of the city. Can I tell you, somebody today, uh, go and tell people uh, uh, that there's hope, uh, that there's truth in the gospel, uh, and that we're not on our way to a devil's hell. No, uh, we're on our way to a heavenly paradise, uh, heaven uh, with the Lord. Can I tell you, that's what we need to be telling people today, uh, that there's hope, uh, and the hope is Jesus. Uh, and if you hope in Jesus, uh, one day you'll realize heaven. I'm on my way to heaven. How about you? I'm on my way to heaven. I'm on my way to this place where there'll be no more pain. There'll be no more sorrow. There'll be no more sickness. This mortal will put on immortality. This corruptible flesh will put on incorruption. The dead will be raised incorruptible uh, and we shall be changed. And then will be brought to pass the saying that is written that death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, hell, uh, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin uh, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God uh, who gives us the victory uh, through Jesus Christ our Lord. I'm going to a city, church. I'm going to the city that has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. I'm on my way to heaven and see, when we go and tell, that's what we're going to tell. When we go to the highways and the hedges, uh, that's what we're going to tell them. Uh, when we're urging them to come to God's house, that's what we're telling them about. When we go to the least of these, that's what we're telling them about. The truth of the gospel the hope of Jesus Christ and the paradise of heaven. I don't know about you, church, but I want to go to heaven. So whatever you do, go and tell. Whatever you do, go and tell somebody that Jesus Christ saves, that he redeems. So let me ask this question. Who will you tell about Jesus? Who will you tell about Jesus and what he did for you and what he can do for them? When you stand before God, when you stand before the king of the universe and you give an account for your actions, what will he say to you? Will he say, well done, good and faithful servant, enter in and receive your reward? Or will he look at you and say, depart from me, you who worked iniquity. I never knew you. Will you stand before God with regret? Will you stand before God with the regret of, I wish I had, I should have? Or will you stand there with the regret of saying, God, I wish I could have done more. I wish I could have done more. I did work, but I, I wish I could have done more. Or will you stand there 
with the worst friend ever and say, I should have done something. I should have done something, but I did nothing. Well, will you stand there knowing that you did everything that Jesus called you to do? Will you stand there knowing that you did everything you were supposed to do? Well, when you stand before God, will you stand there saying with regret, I wish I had done something. I wish I had done something. Can I tell you, I mentioned it a moment ago, we live in a time of a spiritual emergency. And it's time that the body of Christ rises up. That we urge people to come into his house. That we urge them to live a right and holy life before the Lord. I mentioned this Wednesday night, you know, if there's no fruit of salvation in your life, according to the Bible, then there is no salvation. If there's no fruit, of, you can say you're saved all you want. You can say, oh, I know who Jesus is, but there's a lot of people in hell that know who Jesus is. It's not about knowing who He is. It's about being in a personal relationship with Him and Him being the Lord of your life. That's what it's about this morning. And that's what we've got to urge people to do. To know Him in the full pardon of sin. Paul said in Romans that if we'll confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross, then we will be saved. And that's all it takes. Schindler, as he stood there, you heard him say, I could have got one more person. I could have got one more person. Let that be our cry. God, help me to get one more person. Lord, help me to get one more person. And once I get that one, help me to get one more person. You see, if you do that, regret won't be your friend. You can stand and say, I did everything I could to reach one more person. Won't you stand with me this morning? This morning, we're going to take communion together. I know we typically do it the first Sunday of the month, and we did it the first Sunday of this month. We'll do it the first Sunday of next month. But it's Easter Sunday. We should remember all that Christ did for us. We should remember the work of Calvary. We should remember the labor of love that Christ did. But before we take communion together, I want us to take a few moments. They have a song they're going to sing. And as they sing this song, I want us to take a few moments here. We'll take communion together here after they sing the song. But I want us to take a few moments and let the Lord search us. You got regrets? I mean, I know we all have regrets, but do you have regret over people? Do you have a regret over not telling people who Jesus is? Can I tell you, during this time of prayer, if you've got regrets, turn them over to the Lord. Let the Lord deal with them. And then reason in your heart that you'll not live in that regret and that you'll not have a reason for that regret again. That we'll that we'll be able to stand before God and say, Lord, I did everything I could to get one more person. I also, this morning, during this time of when they're singing, I want us to let the Lord search us, not just to reach more people, 
But maybe there's something not right in your heart. Maybe there's something not right in your life. Maybe you don't know Jesus. Maybe today you don't know Him. Maybe today it's been a long time since you've been in a right relationship with Him. Now's the time to make that right. Now's the time. Don't wait till tomorrow. Don't put off for tomorrow what can be done today. Let our hearts be tender to Him as they sing this song this morning. Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Yes. Jesus. Search us, O Lord. Jesus at the center of it all. Oh, yes. Let Jesus be the center of your life today. Jesus at the center of it all. Yes. From beginning to the end, Search me. it will always be. It's always God, help been me to desire Jesus. And just get one more question. One more Nothing else matters. One more person. It's my desire, my long ego call. So we'll see one more person saved. One more person know you as Savior the whole part of us. Jesus. This morning, before we take communion, I want to 
I would be negligent this morning on an Easter Sunday morning to not do this. I don't know where you are with the Lord. I don't know what you've been dealing with, what you've been going through. But whatever it is today, the Lord is here. And He wants to touch you. He wants to help you. He wants to give you the strength. He wants to give you the joy again. So this morning, if you will, just take a moment with every head bowed and every eye closed for just a moment. You say, you know what? Just, I just need a touch of the Lord this morning. In fact, I want to ask a couple of questions. One, if you don't know Jesus, maybe, whatever it may be, maybe, maybe you've never asked Jesus in your heart. Maybe, maybe you have, but, but you, you know you're not living like you should live. And you need to renew the relationship with Jesus. If that's you, just right where you are. You say, what do I need to do? I want you to just this morning, just right where you are, I want you to just lift your hand if that's you. If that's you this morning, just lift your hand. Anyone this morning. He said, we're going to pray for you. We're not, listen, I'm not going to call you out. I'm not going to do anything. Nobody's looking around. Just me and the Lord. You say, you know what? I, I need Jesus in my life. I'm not living right. I'm not living like I know I should. But I need Jesus. Is there anyone this morning? Anyone this morning? Maybe this morning you say, you know what, Pastor? I'm just dealing with some things and I need, I need the Lord's help. I just need his strength. I just need the Lord just to help me out and bring me through this because I don't know that I can make it on my own. If that's you this morning, right where you are, just slip your hand up. See those hands. In a moment, we're going to take communion. But before we do, I want to pray for you. Father, touch these ones. You know the ones that need you. You know the ones that need to surrender a part of their life that they're holding back. God, we just ask that you'll touch them. Whether they're here online or here in person, touch lives. Those that need you, Jesus, help them to surrender to you. Those who need a touch in their life or they need your strength, God, we pray that you'll just strengthen them today. And that, God, you'll build them up and that you'll touch them. In Jesus' name. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, for I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me, for as oft as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. This morning, if you've not already, take a moment and get your communion cups ready right in the chair in front of you there. Paul goes on to say that taking this unworthily in other words, taking this and not knowing Christ has the severest of consequences and that it could even cause death. That's what Paul said. So this morning, that's why it's so vitally important that we make sure everything is right in our life between us and the Lord before we take communion. So right now, before we take there's anything you need to make right, make it right now. You say, how do I make it right? Lord, forgive me. Lord, help me. Lord, give me grace. Help me to go to that person. Help me. God, I need you. That's how you do it. Lord, we thank you, Jesus, for your broken body. We thank you that you bore the stripes on your back for our healing. We celebrate that today. On this Easter, on this Resurrection Sunday, 
we celebrate you, Jesus, that you took in your body what we deserved. Jesus, we thank you. We, we celebrate it. And although it was a horrible act, we're so thankful that you took it so we didn't have to. Take and eat this morning. Now, Jesus, we're thankful for shed blood because we know that without your shed blood, there'd be no remission of sin. Oh, we're so thankful for the blood of Calvary. Lord, it still amazes us how red blood can be applied to black sin and make a heart white as snow. But I'm thankful for it. I rejoice in it this morning. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood that washes clean and purifies that enables me to be right before you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your shed blood. Take and drink this morning. Now, I want us just to take a moment, and in your own way, right where you are, let's just thank the Lord for salvation. Let's just thank the Lord for all that he's done for us. Because without him, we have nothing. But in him, we have everything. So can we thank him? Jesus, we just thank you today. We thank you for what you've done. We thank you for who you are. God, we celebrate you, Jesus. We rejoice in you, O oh God, the God of our salvation. Touch Jesus. Minister to us. Lord, as we rejoice in you, let us continue to have a heart of joy celebrating the God of our salvation, celebrating you on this Easter Sunday. Jesus, touch this morning. Jesus, do what only you can do. And God, we'll give you glory for it. Jesus, we thank you for everything. In your name, we pray. Celebrate and ask these things. Amen. You in love with Jesus this morning? Amen. Ain't nothing like Jesus. Amen? Amen? Let me encourage you today. As I know families gather on Easter. My family will be joining us this afternoon. And we're just planning to have a good day and time with them. Let's not forget why we have Easter. And let's celebrate Easter not just today, but every day. Amen? Amen. Don't forget all the things going on this week, the bulletin and everything. Let me take a moment to those who are watching us online. Thank you for watching online. If you had an experience with Christ today, we would love to hear from you. Uh, so somebody's still on our chat. They're monitoring that and they're talking with you. So if you had an experience with Christ today, let us know. If you, had, if you were here today and you had an experience with Christ, let us know because we want to celebrate with you what Christ has done in, in your life. We know he can do it and we just want to celebrate it. Amen? I'm going to ask for our council member of the week, Brother Terry Phillips, to this Terry Triplett, not Phillips. He's not a Phillips. <laughs> brother Larry just got a brother. <laughs> Larry, Terry, I got, just got them all mixed up. Terry Triplett dismisses in prayer. Mm -hmm.